welcome to Finextra TV. We're live at Innovate Finance Global Summit and kindly joining me now is Lord Chris Holmes of Richmond MBE. Chris, thank you very much for taking the time out to speak with us today. It's good to have you on. Absolute pleasure. Great to be back at IFGS in person. Isn't it great? That's right, it's great to be in person. And already we're hearing a lot about some exciting emerging trends, one of which is embedded finance, which is at the heart of discussion at this year's event. So perhaps you could set the scene by expanding on that for us. I think embedded finance is undoubtedly the hot topic of 2022 and beyond, and probably deserves the title given to so many subjects. Embedded finance deserves to be coined as transformational. Seven trillion opportunity. It's good to try and break that down to see what is additional growth and what is substitutional growth. But one thing that we can all be absolutely certain of is it will impact all of us and we need to make sure that that impact is positive for all of us. All right, and what about the UK then? What's the government uh, doing in the space to sort of um, ensure that we remain in a competitive position? The government in the UK needs to be saying more and getting into the whole space of embedded finance. We see some fabulous private sector examples in the UK and indeed globally, but really we could see some excellent proofing of concepts and deployments of embedded finance in government to enable government to be a better supplier, to enable government to be more customer centric, to save money and provide a far better, if you will, experience for citizens, not just as customers, but as actual citizens. It could be a key part of enabling us to have that future finance state in short order. Sure. All right. And what kind of challenges might um, we expect along the way uh, to ensure that position? Two of the biggest challenges from my perspective are, as with so many other elements of new technologies, and it's much around data and privacy. We need to enable everybody, be they interacting, transacting with government or private enterprise, to understand it's their data in their hands, our data in our hands. How we deploy it, how we use it is down to us, and we need to have that. Then with all of the right privacy considerations set around all of those deployments, it can be a stunningly positive opportunity. It can enable economic and social growth post-pandemic, but that's a can. At the moment, it's not an inevitable. And staying on that positive note then, can you highlight uh, some exciting use cases you're seeing in the space? I think one of the most exciting use cases is the ability to have that golden truth, that one point where everything can coalesce around for the individual. So we truly can have something which isn't just called personalization, but really is positive personalization, friction out, seamless experience in with us empowered in that situation. And probably you see the greatest examples of that perhaps in the APAC region with some of the so-called super apps. What will be interesting and potentially exciting is to see what happens when some of that stuff comes west. So watch this space, it's safe to say. Chris, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back to the event and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolute pleasure.